So I didn't want to sound too sick of antics, so outside of earshot of the guy that's been silent, I was absolutely blown away by that beer, and I was genuinely tuning out from, from what Tim was saying, because I was just trying to process this hugely complex, hugely balanced beer. So I'm going to do it for you now. What you get is loads and loads of sweet molasses, raisins, sort of a desiccated flake coconut thing, but not a lot of that roastiness, not a lot of that chocolate, not a lot of that coffee. There's just little hints of it, which is why they do the variations, I guess. And then on the palate, that, that molasses turns into licorice. You've got a little bit more roastiness, but not a huge amount. It's just sort of a, a little hint of bitterness where the hops would be. And loads of kind of, like, I don't know, like rum and raisin kind of thing going on. Um, and that sweetness gives way to a slight booze burn at the end that cleans all that up. And you're just left with an oaky, almost scotch-like finish rather than a bourbon finish. It's like, it's so clearly defined, which is not something you get with a lot of beers. You get it with IPAs because you get the malt and then bam, you get the hops. With Imperial Stouts, they're harder to sort of dissect, whereas this one is so easy and that's the joy of this beer. And why I, all hyperbole aside, I think it's one of the best beers in the world. Thank you.